Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Terry. Welcome back to our Forest Farm Series here on Survival Dispatch. Today we're going to talk to you about sharpening tools in the field. We've used axes and knives and parangs, uh, machetes, everything out here in clearing and maddox, the whole nine yards. Well, when those tools get dull, you need a good way to sharpen them because it's less fatigue on your body when you're driving a sharp tool into a tree or into a root. Any kind of digging you're doing just makes life so much easier. And we've found one of the best things to use is a Lansky puck. It's a very versatile sharpening stone, very easy to use. It doesn't take a lot of knowledge on how to use it. Put a little bit of honing oil on it that comes with it, and it really makes a big difference. Yeah, and you know, it, whether you're chopping with a, a, a prying or you're chopping with an ax, whatever, mm -hmm. if you've used a chainsaw, it's a similar concept. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you wouldn't use that sharp chainsaw, <laughs> yeah. but when you've got a dull blade or chain, yeah. It's just, you're fighting to get it through that tree and it's getting hot and smoking and everything else. A dull matic will bounce off the root, whereas right, a sharp right. one will sink into it. Right. That chainsaw, you get it sharp, it just goes like butter. Same thing yeah. with parang or any yeah. cutting tools, you know, if it's sharp, it's going to cut. Oh yeah. Most likely. So yep. it's worth the effort. And a lot of people have asked me in, over the years how to use this thing properly. So we made a video on it and I think it's really helpful. This is a, a great tool to have in your pack. I mean, it, it's tiny, it doesn't weigh a lot and it can really help you if you're out in the field, if you're out camping, backpacking, whatever. It's a really good thing to have. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Yeah, and there's one question that's come up. Uh, we use oil. That's yeah. what they intend you to use. Yeah. Lansky puck oil. I mean oil. Lansky honing oil. Honing oil, that's what I'm gonna say. Honing yeah. Oil. Yeah, it's good for all their sharpeners. But anyway, yeah. um, I believe I've seen people use like a whetstone. They use water and whatnot. But I really don't know the answer to all those questions. We use oil. That's, yeah. We just use oil. I mean, if you yeah. didn't have it, you could spit on it, I guess, you know. But <laughs> you just want to lubricate. Really well. it, it works a yeah. lot better. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. In our time out here clearing, we have really worked these parangs. Uh, we've worked maddox, axes, anything with a blade on it. It's going to get dull out here when you're working. You're going to hit rocks. You're going to just hit hard wood, and it's going to roll the edge over. You don't want to put a super fine edge on things that's razor sharp because that edge is so thin it just rolls right over when it hits anything hard. Well, you just want a good working edge on it. What we've found to work really well for us is a little bit of Lansky honing oil and a Lansky puck. It's a dual sided puck and on this side, the lighter side, which is hard to tell right now because this is a really heavily used puck. The lighter side is 280 grit and the darker side is 120 grit. You can usually figure out, if you can't tell by the color, you can hit the chamfered area and you can feel a definite smoothness between the two sides. The coarser side is going to be the one you want to start with and then you want to work your way to the finer side. So I'm going to show you guys what this thing will do. As you guys can see, this edge is very, very worn. There's a lot of nicks in it, a lot of rolled edges and definitely in need of some care. So with a parang, the best part to hit is this meteor portion. That's where you're gonna get your most effective cuts. So now the way to work this puck is, we're gonna take the dark side, we're gonna put a drop of oil and just smooth that around. Always keep a rag handy to wipe your excess oil off. And now you wanna get, grab the sides of the puck and just start going in a circular motion. The nice thing about this puck having the edges up like it does in this chamfered area is you're close to 3 eighths of an inch higher than your cutting surface so as long as you keep your fingers back on that edge you're good. You just keep going in a circular motion. You want to work one side completely then work the other side and then come back and do it again. You want to maintain a constant angle when you're doing this. By maintaining a constant angle, you don't have to worry about working out any irregularities in your blade. And as you guys can see, this is already getting nice and shiny. It's really working it back. Like I said, in the meaty area is where the most striking goes on. So that's where the most nicks and curls are. That's going to take the most work to work it out. And you definitely want to brace against something solid while you're doing this so the blade's not working all over. You don't want to get in a rush with this. You want to take your time. I find it to be almost therapeutic sharpening a blade because it gives me time to get away from what I was doing and focus on a menial task and 
just relax a little bit. That's looking a heck of a lot better. Let's flip it over and work the other side some. I'm gonna apply another drop of oil. Wipe it off my finger. Getting this stone wet just really helps it cut better. Now when you see a lot of heavy nicks in your blade, you will have to take a lot of meat off of that blade in order to completely get rid of them. When there's not that many, I'll leave them. I don't want to take that much metal off the blade. And over time, you will work them out as you sharpen it more and more. This is just a beater tool. I use it on chopping and cutting. It's nothing, you know, just heavy stuff. It's not a fine working tool. So as long as 95% of the blade is pretty sharp, I'm happy with it. It's going to do the job it needs to do. So let's switch over and do the fine side and I'll show you how nice it smooths it up. Okay, so let's put a drop of oil on this bad boy. Get that worked into it. And now let's smooth this blade up. You can tell a big difference in the sound between the coarse and the fine. And yes, for the safety Nazis, I probably should be wearing gloves, but I get a much better feel for what I'm doing when I do this barehanded. Don't you dare do what I'm doing. You wear gloves. <laughs> Okay, let's flip it over and do the other side. Apply another drop of oil. And let's finish this bad boy up. Actually, I'm gonna take some of the oil off of this blade so I don't get it on my pants. Okay, I am going to look at it and just see what I think of it. I think it's looking pretty good. I do want to just fine tune it up close where I can see it. That little tip at the end is always a booger, which it's not really crucial. This isn't something I'm stabbing with. It's just a chopping tool. But one thing to keep in mind is when you're sharpening a blade of any kind, you're going to have a bevel at some point where the blade starts to roll down to the fine edge. And that's what you want to follow with your puck or file or whatever you're using to sharpen. You want to maintain that bevel because if you change that angle, it's going to throw the whole system off and it's going to be a royal pain to fix. So make sure you follow that bevel the whole way, all the way through. And it takes a little bit of work to get used to that angle, but once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. And the key thing is consistency. If you're off a little bit, but you're always off, at least it's gonna be consistently off and you'll have a uniform angle that you're used to. So just whatever you do, repeat it over and over and over. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up for a like. Hit that subscribe button below. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified when new videos come out. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Have a good one, guys. See you next time.